911 operator Harris, where is your emergency? I don't, I don't know what's happening. Somebody kicked in the door inside my girlfriend. Okay, where are you located? I'm at 3003 Springfield Drive, apartment four. 3003 Springfield Drive, apartment number four? Yes. <laughs> my God. Okay, how old is your girlfriend? She's, she's for 26. Bring it. Oh you said 26, God. where was she shot at? I don't know. She's on the grill right now. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Mama. You said she's 26. Is she alert and able to talk to you? Uh, no, she's not. Breathe. God. Okay. And you said you're in apartment number four. Help! Oh, my God. Yes, help. What's your help. name, sir? Oh, I think it's Kenneth Walker. You said Kenneth. And you said she's 26? Yes. Okay, you said 3003 Springfield Drive, apartment number four? Yes. Okay. Can you check and see where she's been shot at? I can't get on her stomach. Okay. Is, is she alert and able to talk to you? No, Bree. Okay. Oh my God! Oh my God! Can can you get her turned over on her back? I need I to get a check and see where she shot it. Oh my God! Oh my God! I gotta go. Mama, okay. I gotta You have reached the voice message. Twenty-six-year-old Brianna Taylor was fatally shot by three plainclothes police officers attempting to serve a no-knock search warrant at 12.40 a.m. on March 13, 2020, as a part of a narcotics investigation. Court records show that Louisville police obtained a warrant with a no-knock provision for Taylor's apartment approved by Jefferson Circuit Judge Mary Shaw. Day, March 12th. Judge Mary Shaw signs off on five warrants as part of a large narcotics investigation. Three warrants were for properties on Elliott Avenue in West Louisville. Detectives wrote they were looking for drugs, weapons, electronics, and mail related to illegal drug activity. A fourth warrant was for a house on Muhammad Ali. And then this warrant for 26-year-old Brianna Taylor's South Louisville apartment. How was Taylor connected? She wasn't the main suspect in the case, but she was named on the warrant for 26-year-old Brianna Taylor's South Louisville apartment. How was Taylor connected? She wasn't the main suspect in the case, but she was named on the warrant. Detectives say in January of this year, they witnessed their main suspect, Jamarcus Glover, arrive at Taylor's apartment, go inside, and then come back out with a package. Police say Glover then got into his car and drove to the Muhammad Ali address, which the detective called a known drug house. The warrant goes on to say that a U.S. Postal Inspector verified that Glover had been receiving packages at Taylor's apartment and that it is not uncommon for drug traffickers to receive mail packages at different locations to avoid detection from law enforcement. Detectives also wrote they believe Glover may be keeping narcotics or proceeds from the sale of narcotics inside Taylor's apartment for safekeeping. On the night of March 12th, Detective John Mattingly and several others were briefed on the plan. Mattingly says he drove by Taylor's apartment around 1145 to scope it out. And then, around 1230 on the morning of March 13th, Officers parked in front of Brianna Taylor's building and walked up to her door. So let's pause right here for just one second to clear up this little bit of misinformation that had been going around. And that was the claim that the police were at the wrong apartment. 
It remains clear tonight that Louisville Metro Police were at the wrong home. Now, this misinformation was spread by attorney Benjamin Crump when on May 11th, he tweeted that the Louisville police had fatally shot Breonna Taylor and that they had the wrong address and that their real suspect was already in custody. Now, we know that this isn't true because as we just saw on March 12th, Judge Shaw was the one who signed off on the warrant for the search of Breonna Taylor's apartment. The detectives say they knocked on the door multiple times. I knocked on the door, banged on it. Um, we didn't announce the first couple because our intent was not to, to hit the door. Our intent was to give her plenty of time to come to the door because they said she, she was probably there alone. Um, it probably lasted between 45 seconds and a minute, banging on the door. And at that time, I look back at Lieutenant Hoover and he says, I guess go ahead and hit it. Because at one point, probably after about the third time we banged, um, Mike was standing at the doorway and he says, I can hear somebody inside. I think they're coming to the door. So we thought they were coming to the door. And then we didn't hear anything else. So we kept banging and announcing. So it's a loud boom at the door. First thing she said was, who is it? No response. So we like, what the heck? We both get up, start putting on clothes. Another knock at the door. She's like, who is it? Loud at the top of her lungs. No response. So I'm like, what the heck? So then I grab my gun, which is legal, like I'm licensed to carry everything. I've never even fired my gun outside of a range. I'm scared to death. So she says that there's another knock at the door. She's yelling at the top of her lungs, and I am too at this point. Who is it? No answer, no response, no anything. So we like, what the heck? We both just see what I have on. Grab the nearest thing. These aren't even mine. He's hurts. Like... So we both are just putting on something to go answer the door and see who's knocking at the door this late at night. Now we're gonna pause real quick just so we can make a few observations about the stories that we are hearing from both the police and the boyfriend at this moment. And at this point, both the boyfriend and the police's stories match. One, both police and Kenneth agree that there were indeed knocks at the door. Two, Kenneth says that him and Brianna were yelling from down the hallway in their bedroom, who is it, without getting or hearing any responses. Three, the police admitted that those first few knocks, they did not announce themselves. Their intent was to give her time to come to the door. And with a no knock warrant, they do not have to announce themselves or even give the courtesy of a knock. But they still extended a courtesy knock, being that they thought she was a woman home alone with no pets. Four, Kenneth admits because it was a long hallway, that's why him and Brianna couldn't hear anything from the other side of the door. But he felt like the police should have heard them because him and Brianna were screaming loudly. Five, the police admitted they thought they could hear something at one point, but no one came to the door, so they forced it open. Six, Kenneth admits that they were not dressed and that they were yelling from all the way down the hallway from the bedroom and that they didn't decide to go towards the door until after the third round of knocks, giving him and Brianna time to throw on some clothes and for him to grab his weapon before they decided to make their way down the hall towards the door. And at that point, Lieutenant Hoover said, go ahead and hit it. So I looked at Mike and said, go ahead. Um, so he hits the first time and it hits right on the door handle and didn't, didn't move the door. And every time he hits, people are announcing, please search warrant, please search warrant. Second time he hits, he hits the good spot and it almost knocks the door open. You can see, I can see the deadbolt, uh, at an angle and I can see a crack in the door into the, leading into the apartment. So I said, uh, this one's going to go. So he hit the third time, and as soon as he hit the door, came out and they're yelling, please search warrant, please search warrant. So when we come out, when we get out of the uh, bed or whatever, like walking towards the door, the, like, the door like comes like off the hinges. Um, I go to around the corner, I could see, I clear the, 
the living room on the right hand side where you can see the, the uh, sliding glass door as I turn the corner um, as soon as I cleared the threshold of the of the front door I could see down the hallway my mind would just your mind works so quick in the situation it's unreal um, because as soon as I cleared it I'm face on about probably 20 feet away right down the hallway there's a bedroom door on the right and there's a the male and a female the males closest to the door so it's to my right and as I turned the, the doorway he's in a stretched out position with his hands with a gun and as soon as I clear he fires boom so now the doors like flying open I'll have one shot and then all of a sudden there's a whole lot of shots and like we both just dropped to the ground and the gun like fell like right over there and I like kicked it because I'm like scared to death like now we're seeing lights and stuff so it's looking like okay it's the police and there's a lot of yelling and stuff so there's just shooting like we're both on the ground and then when all the sh shots stop I'm like panicking she's right there on the ground like bleeding and yeah so I hit this corner and it goes boom and as soon as the as soon as the shot hit I could feel the heat in my leg and so I just returned fire I got four rounds off um, and it was like simultaneous it's boom 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 and then I went back and went down on the side of the door and then reached around and I think I got two more off around the corner of the door and then I could really feel the blood in my leg so I reached out and felt it my hand was full of blood and I knew it, it hit my femoral at that point so I scooted back on my butt and I yelled at them I've been hit my I've been hit my femoral and um, I scooted back and I think at that time Miles slid up I'm not sure I think he was over my left shoulder behind me I'm not sure where he was standing I know Tony was behind me Mike was Mike was to the right of the door with the ram it was Brett Hoover and Campbell had come up um, around the corner at that point uh, by the stairs. So I'm assuming Miles was behind me because I think he was there in front of me. Um, and so I slid back on my butt to get out of the line of fire. And um, and for a second, I had let go of my gun and I realized what I did. So I reached out and grabbed my gun and pulled it back. And I was like, I can't stay here. So I stood up and I shot, I hobbled out across uh, in front of the door and went to where the curb is, where you step off in between the cars. And I guess Mike Campbell had stumbled, and I think he stepped back when, when the shots fired, I'm assuming, and fell off the curb. Because when I went to go through the cars, I looked down and was like, why? my mind's going, why are you on the ground? You know, and I tripped over him or fell off the curb or something. Um, at that point, I holstered my gun and scooted to the edge of the car, and then Hoover came up and grabbed my vest from behind and pulled me. So while the officers were outside helping their other fellow fallen officer and waiting for backup, multiple 911 calls started streaming in from other fellow neighbors who were concerned about the shooting, asking questions about what was going on, or to report bullets entering their own apartments with their children inside, most definitely wanting an explanation. While Kenneth, on the other hand, was on the phone with his mother before he finally placed his 911 call. Now, mind you, Kenneth knew it was the police who had entered his apartment by now, and it was them who had shot Brianna. Dev, like now we're seeing lights and stuff. So it's looking like, okay, it's the police, and there's a lot of yelling and stuff. So there's just shooting, like we're both on the ground. Another piece of misinformation that I think is out there is that Mr. Walker called 911 when there was an attempt, this attempted entry was being made. In fact, that's not what happened. I'd like to play clip number four, please. Like, I, I called my mom and I told her that somebody just kicked in the door and shot Bree. So at that point when I called my mom, I still didn't know it was the police. So I told her on the phone, somebody kicked the door. So I hung up, my mom's like, call 911 right now, call 911 right, right now. So I called 911. Then I told them what happened. I'm still not knowing it's the police. Cause then I called uh, Brianna's mom. I hung up on 911. I told them my name and I told them what happened and I told them where I was at. Then I hung up on I was like, I gotta go, I gotta go. So I called her mom. I called Brianna's mom and then I told her what just happened. And when I was on the phone with her, 
that's when I kind of realized that it was the police. After the shooting, we know that there was the, the first shot fired by Mr. Walker and the police returned fire. We know they retreated. They backed off because they didn't know what was going on inside. And it's at that time that Mr. Walker made the phone calls to his mother, to 911, and to Brianna's mother. He was ultimately ordered to come outside, and he did. And he would admit in his statement that he was scared. He spoke to police in the parking lot when they arrested him, and they asked him who was shooting at us. And his response was his girlfriend, Ms. Taylor. Could you have played clip number three, please? This is the interview. Um, man, and help me to kind of understand something, right? Um, so I know you originally told like the officers or whatever, like she shot the gun. Yeah, I didn't mean to. I was just scared. Like I didn't want them to think that I was like on something. Where it's like when I first came out and stuff, I had no reason to say. Like I said, my gun's legal and everything. Like clearly, I was scared. Like I don't know. Like nobody announced herself or anything like clearly like i said me and her have no dealings with the police or whatever so if i would have heard at the door oh it's the police it changes the whole situation like there's nothing for us to be scared of it's important that we play that part because when mr walker told the officers at the scene that his girlfriend had fired a shot in preparing a search warrant, they listed Miss Brianna Taylor as a suspect. It wasn't until later that the PIU investigators found out that this was not a true statement. And I think it's important that the public knows that the police were not trying to disrespect Miss Taylor in any way, but they were acting on the information that was given to them by Mr. Walker. Now, after this shooting, Kenneth Walker was arrested and charged with attempted murder of a police officer. By April 27th, Breonna Taylor's family had brought about a wrongful death lawsuit. By May 22nd, the charges against Kenneth Walker had been dropped, but they had been dropped without prejudice, meaning that this case could be brought back up later on in the future. So because of this, Kenneth Walker hired an attorney to go for a lawsuit against the police as well. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Frederick Moore. Uh, to my immediate right is obviously Kenneth Walker. To his right is Mr. Stephen Romines. Steve and I have the distinct honor and privilege uh, in representing Mr. Walker. Behind us are his mom and dad, Mr. and Mrs. Walker. Uh, as I'm sure everyone is aware today, um, we filed a complaint for declaratory and monetary relief in Jefferson Circuit Court. Um, rather than have a bunch of different interviews, uh, we thought it'd be prudent to just do one here and answer a bunch of questions. Um, so uh, we're going to begin by Kenneth reading his statement. He's not going to answer any questions, uh, but after that, Steve and I will uh, answer some questions. All right? Good, Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Of course, my name is Kenneth Walker. My life changed forever in the early morning of March 13th. I was laying in bed with Brianna around midnight watching a movie. All of a sudden, someone started beating on the door. They refused to answer when we yelled, who is it? 15 minutes later, Brianna was dead from a hell of police gunfire and I was in police custody. The police arrested, jailed, and charged me with murder of a police officer. I was raised by a good family. I am a legal gun owner, and I would never know we shoot a police officer. Brianna and I did not know who was banging on the door, but the police know what they did. The charges brought against me were meant to silence me and cover up Brianna's murder. For her and those that I love, I can no longer remain silent. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. May 28th, 2020. Three days after the George Floyd murder, Breonna Taylor's case finally got some huge major media attention when Kenneth Walker's 911 call was finally released to the public. This recording sparked protest 
in Louisville for Breonna Taylor's death. By May 29th, no knock warrants had been suspended. And by June 11th, Breonna's law was passed, which banned no knock warrants. 